study about the justification and sanctification. So last night we defined the genuine faith and we have seen the role of, of uh, faith, how it plays in our salvation. And tonight we're gonna look at the two main areas of this justification and sanctification. You can just open your thing if, if you want to say something or you ask something, just prepare your Bibles your paper, your ball pen, so you can write it down or you can ask me to repeat something. I hope I can repeat it, but I'll try by the grace of God and through the Holy Spirit. Um, so justification and sanctification, that together makes up the doctrine or the teachings or the message. Um, Hold on, Mark, Mark is testing me. Okay, so putting together this justification and sanctification this makes up the doctrine of righteousness by faith or salvation by faith. The only thing is that there's much confusion in the church today over this aspect of righteousness by faith. So tonight, we must be clear of two points. First, you can see it there, right? The similarities. Both justification and sanctification are found upon the objective facts of the gospel. Meaning, what Christ, by his holy history, by his life, Good. Just squeeze some. Okay, it's all right. Um, okay, so we need to, you can see it there, right? It's objective truth or the objective facts of the gospel. What Christ has done, what Christ accomplished, in his holy history, by his birth, life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. What he has already prepared and provided for the whole human race. Number two, it is by faith alone that we receive and experience both justification and sanctification. Very important. You can write it down, take picture or screenshot and study also for yourself. So that by... Um, putting and repeating it, studying, reading, it will uh, be inculcated in our, in our minds. So we will not be confused when we share the truth, the word of God to, to our friends, to our family. We must be sure and grounded to the truth of the word of God and we will uh, evade some confusion. So what do we really mean by the terms justification and sanctification? So what is involved in each and how they differ from each other. Okay. So keep in mind that both, you see in there, right? In the differences, both are founded in the objective facts of the gospel. We may describe justification as the righteousness of Christ imputed or credited to us as a consequence of accepting Christ by faith. Justification is God's work for us in Jesus Christ for the whole human race. And then when we hear that message and we accept it personally, it becomes justification by faith. It becomes effective to us. That is what it called uh, imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ. Okay. Sanctification is the same righteousness of Christ, but now it's being imparted. So you will see the, the root word of imputed, that means put to your credit now imparted it it gives you it gives you the part of what he has already or given to you to impart to us as a result of living by faith now legal justification affected or affected at the cross is nothing or is not something we experience it it is something we receive as a gift. So sanctification, on the other hand, is something we personally experience by accepting the 
the message or the word of God as we walk by faith, of course, through the Holy Spirit. In both cases, the thing that we receive and experience is the righteousness of Christ. And praise the Lord for such a gift, right? So therefore, justification is the gift of the gospel that legally declares us righteous before God. While sanctification is a provision, is a continuous experience that God is giving us through the gospel that actually produces the righteousness of Christ in us through the Holy Spirit. So, the one qualifies for us for heaven that other makes fits us to live in heaven. You get it? Justification qualifies us or gives us title for heaven and the other makes us fit or that is our fitness to heaven. In other words, when we apply it to a couple, the question is, which is important? Getting married or staying married? Some people getting married, some people staying married. Both are important. You cannot stay married if you don't get married. And getting married without staying married doesn't make sense. So this is the, this is the process that God has given us. If you have your uh, ready with your Bible with you, uh, we will go back again to the verse that we always use for how God uh, accomplished for us in Jesus Christ. What did he do for us? First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. What does it say there? But of him that is God, the Father, but of him, you, as the believers, you are in Christ. So him, the Father, the you, the believers, us, you are in Christ. God made Jesus Christ for us, for things, wisdom, a special knowledge of salvation. What knowledge? Wisdom about righteousness, which is justification, or God made us right with him, justification. And then you will see the, second, the, the third one, sanctification, that is holy living. That makes us, we call it Christian living or holy living or walking in the spirit. Number four, redemption or glorification. That will be the experience of the believers. That will be our experience when Jesus comes, when this um, corruption will put on incorruption and this mortality will put on immortality. But Christ already accomplished that in his holy history. In Jesus Christ, all the requirements of our salvation from Righteousness or justification, sanctification, and glorification was already accomplished and obtained by Jesus Christ. Now to us as a subjective experience, we will only experience that by stages. When we hear the word, when we hear the gospel, faith comes from hearing and hearing the gospel. Then we say yes, and then we submit ourselves to the truth. We obey to the truth that in Christ, we live a perfect life. And in Christ, we died with him at the cross. And in Christ, we were resurrected together with him. Then, um, we will start walking in the spirit. That is now called sanctification. So, um, both of this comes from God as a gift to us. So, we experience it by process. We accept it. We are justified by faith. Then we walk. Faithfully, even to the end, by the grace of God, that is sanctification, then we will experience glorification. So justification is simply the objective gospel applied to us as believers who put or who accept Jesus Christ by faith. In other words, when a person accepts the gospel and is united by faith in Jesus Christ, immediately all that Christ has prepared and provided for the whole humanity as our actual substitute, not vicarious substitute, but our actual substitute and representative, that truth become effective for that person, for you or for me, when we accept this message. The history of Christ now becomes lawfully the history of the believer. You know why? Because he is in Christ by faith. And now he is allowing Christ through the Holy Spirit, through the indwelling of the Spirit, 
in his life. So God looked at such person, the believer, as being perfect in obedience, in justice, in nature, since all three were obtained already in Jesus Christ through his holy history. That's why his history, his story is our story. Got it? So, now such a person no longer under the condemnation of the law. The believer, you and me, those who don't believe yet, they don't know that they're not under the law. So they're still living in sin. So we as believers, the Bible is telling us that we are no longer under the condemnation of the law. We already passed from death to life. Can we go to John 5.24? Anybody wants to, to read the Bible? Please unmute. Or I will just read it for you. Jesus said, Truly or verily, verily I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believe on him. So you see the hearing? What does hearing do? It produces faith because faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. So anyone who hears my word and number two, believe. Believe in him that sent me hath guaranteed everlasting life and shall not come to condemnation but already passed from death unto life. We crossed over already. Through Jesus Christ, we already crossed over from death to life, from condemnation to justification. So uh, how about Romans chapter 8 verse 1? If anybody wants to read, you can unmute your mic and and read it. If not, I will I will read it for you. I don't know, I cannot see it here. Romans chapter eight, verse one. And he says Okay, very good. Uh, come in, please, Sister Doris. Doris. Uh, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in, in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit mm -hmm. so what do we have now we are now there is no, no condemnation. condemnation is that a good news that we need it's a great news. to bring it to the world or is uh, just something that we hear something and we'll just keep it for ourselves it's good news that people need to know so that they too may experience the joyous salvation that we have in Jesus Christ. Amen? So now this is the real good news to our personal experience. God look at us as believers justified just as if I'd never sinned. So God look at the justified believer as, as if he has met all the demands, all the requirements of the law necessary to qualify for heaven and eternal life. Justification then is the work of a moment, a heart response when we say yes to the gospel, to what Christ has already accomplished. Once, once a person, if you have evangelism, you listen to the radio and you hear it and they say, yes, Lord, what will I do? And then you surrender to your... The, yourself to that message to this truth as it is in Christ then it's an it's just a moment a heart response to the gospel that's justification so sanctification in contrast you will see there uh, I have a color coding in the um, in the PowerPoint justification is both of them is God's work for us but the blue one is just God's work for for us, the sanctification still God's work in us, but um, we are experiencing it now. Okay, so that's uh, our experience doesn't contribute to our salvation. It allows us to to testify the goodness, the greatness, the grace of God. So 
Sanctification is an hourly and daily experience that continues throughout the lifetime. Lifetime of who? Of the believers, not the world. The believers who continue to walk by faith, to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh anymore. So the gospel, listen to this, the gospel not only free or that only freely gives us the righteousness of Christ in order to deliver us from the condemnation of the law, it also gives us the righteousness of Christ as a personal experience so that we can reflect, we can testify, we can witness his character to the world or to the people that we come in contact with. Okay? So anyone who steps who who steps with justification and makes the entire gospel experience and receive only half they, that's not good news you only have you only receive the the half of the good news god did not send his son merely to legally deliver us from sin so that he could declare us righteous he sent his son in order to also set us free from sin and restore his image in us Remember yesterday or last night, we talked about when God sent his son, he did not send his son to, for us to copy him, but to receive him. But sanctification is not only giving us declaration that we are righteous through justification, but it also allows us to experience freedom from sin and restoration of the character of Christ that was lost when sin entered. So the work of restoration includes sanctification it is part and parcel of the good news or the gospel so it is god's purpose it is god's purpose that the church and his people or his people reflect his character that's the first week of the lockdown that's our topic before revelation chapter 18 verse 1 anybody wants to read please unmute uh, those uh, who just came, I'm, uh, I, I see that a lot of already coming here. Welcome and greetings in the name of the Lord. Good evening, wherever you are. Welcome and thank you for coming, having fellowship with us as the children of God. If we walk in the light, as Christ is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Christ cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Sister Doris, are you there? What what verse did I yeah. say? Uh, I'm here. What did you say? Um, Revelation what? I, I was asking a verse earlier. Oh, Revelation 18, 1. Oh, I think. Yeah. Thank you. I'm, I'm having some senior moment. <laughs> I'm not senior yet, but I'm already practicing. I'm, all, I'm almost half of the decade to become a senior. Revelation 18.1. That's our, our uh, series, the first week of lockdown or home quarantine. Revelation 18.1. It yes. says, After these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his glory. See that? So the purpose of this of God working in us through the Holy Spirit is to reflect the character of Jesus Christ. Meaning the glory, the, the, remember when God created man, he created man in his own image, but it, it was damaged when sin entered. And the, the goal of the gospel is not only to save us from sin and its punishment and its guilt, but also to reproduce once again the character of, of God in us. So there will be a time that this message of the three angels message, which is the everlasting gospel. I want to uh, say this. If you want, you write it down. If you read Revelation chapter 14, the three angels message, it's not three messages. It's only one message, the everlasting gospel. The first message, everlasting gospel in the context of judgment. And the second angel's message is the same message, everlasting 
gospel in the context of the fall of Babylon. And the third, we will study that sometime. I don't know if it's next week or the following week. <laughs> Which is, it depends on the, the world will be divided into two camps. Those who reject the gospel, they will drink the cup of the wrath of God, the indignation of God without mixture. That's what Christ experienced at the cross. But those who will receive this truth from their heart after they hear and they believe and they obey from their hearts this truth of the gospel, then this gospel will produce to them patience and they will learn, learn to keep the commandments of God and to keep the faith of Jesus. So maybe next week or the following week, we're going to study that. The three angels' message, the everlasting gospel, God's last and final warning to a dying world. And you know who God entrusted this message to bring to the world? Ah, it's us. So not because we are special, but God has a special message and God gave us the privilege to do this. What did you say? Yeah. But maybe she is grieving this time. Right? So how about um, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 to 15? Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 to 15. This is part of the spiritual gifts, which we're going to study also. What is the purpose of the spiritual gift? Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 to 15. Sister Doris, or whoever opens your... And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers uh -huh. for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, uh -huh. till we all come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect uh -huh. man. Wow. Unto uh -huh. the measure of a stature of the fullness of Christ, that wow. we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Mm -hmm. the speaking but, the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. You see, so the purpose of the spiritual gift is to make us, make us mature in Jesus Christ and we fully reflect his character to the world. Uh, anyway, that's, I, I think that's Sister Mimia. Good evening and welcome and ano ba? greetings dyan sa mga taga Las Vegas. <laughs> Thank you, Sister Thank Mems. You. Thank yeah. you. So this is the only way God can demonstrate to a dying world, to a lost world, His Son's power or the power of the gospel to destroy sin and the devil. You see, there's no persecution because uh, what the world is doing is the same thing that the Christians are doing today. But once the character of Christ will be fully manifested individually as well as corporately as a church, the world will get jealous with us as what happened to, to Jesus Christ. The Jews, the Romans, the Jews were divided into two, the Sadducees and the Pharisees. They joined together against the Romans. Now they have a common enemy, Jesus Christ. They joined together crucifying Christ. So if the character of Jesus Christ will be fully reproduced, in his children, then that the, the persecution will start again. So now there's no persecution. But uh, I believe that what is happening now, God is allowing us to come together, that we will not focus to what is happening in the world, but focus to what God has done for us and what he's doing for us to prepare ourselves, to prepare the world, to prepare the people for the coming kingdom, which is everlasting kingdom, the kingdom of Jesus Christ. So only by putting together this message of justification by faith, the receiving of Christ's righteousness, and sanctification by faith, experiencing His righteousness, we can get a complete, accurate picture of what is righteousness by faith, or the righteousness of Christ, or the everlasting gospel. So, we will, we will summarize. You can see it in the, uh, what do you call this, in the screen, right? So the difference of 
justification by faith and sanctification by faith. Justification makes effective our legal status or legal standing before God. Well, sanctification has to do with our daily personal experience or daily walk with God, walking in the Spirit, walking by faith. Number two, justification is meritorious or um, um, enough for us to qualify us for heaven, um, both now and the day of judgment. So that's the work of, that's the truth of justification. God declaring us righteous in the eyes of God from the time we accept it until the judgment day. Remember what, what, what will happen in the judgment? We will face God. We will face God. We will face the law. The law will ask us, why are you here? <laughs> you say, I, I don't deserve to be here, but I am here because of Jesus Christ. You don't deserve to be here because you're a sinner. Yes, I am a sinner in and of myself, but Jesus Christ is my righteousness. Oh, so did you obey me? The law will say, did you obey me? Yes, I obeyed you. When? When Christ obeyed you. But you need to, to die. I died already. When? When Christ died. So why are you here now? I am here now because Jesus Christ is not I who is here anymore but it's Jesus Christ. So that's what it means, justification, meritorious. It gives us the right, the legal right, qualifies us for heaven both now and the day of judgment. And sanctification is demonstrative. There's no credit in our lives that we are reflecting the character of Christ. It's just witness to the people around us, his glory, his love, the joy of salvation. It is progressively manifests in our lives that we have already been declared to be righteous in Jesus Christ. Do you see? So justification is the work of a moment. When you accept it, there's no condemnation. Although it remains effective, all are believing as long as we live, it's still effective. Sanctification is a lifelong work that has to be experienced every day through living faith, through walking in the Spirit, or walking by faith. So, apart from these three differences, justification and sanctification are closely related. We may separate them for the purpose of discussion, but in actuality and in real life, real experience, they are inseparable, they're together. Why? Because the righteousness of Christ is the key factor of both. And we realize both by faith alone. Therefore, in its broadest sense, justification by faith includes the experience of sanctification by faith or holy living. Um, Question. Let's see. Who is this? Pastor, Pastor, Pastor Bao. Opo. May tanong po. Okay. Hindi naman to ano hindi naman theological. Tanong ko lang. Ah, uh, ito bang ginagawa natin ngayon individually dito sa Bible study? Santo justification ito or sanctification? Ah, uh, uh, Pastor Bawi sa. May mga tao ba dito? Yeah, justification have... or sanctification na. Ah, uh, we are we are studying the the difference and uh, the similarities of justification. Yesterday, we studied the justification by, by faith. And today, we are studying the, the difference and the similarities of justification by faith. And then what I mean is, itong exercise of studying the Bible, is this for some of us? Part of our justification or part of our sanctification process. Oh, this, this is part of anything that we do in our after we accept the Lord is always part of our of sanctification. Like Bible study, going to church, everything that we do in our Christian living is part of sanctification. Yeah, if if for example, uh, I am a new, I am a newcomer to the Bible study. Mm -hmm. 
I have not yet accepted Jesus Christ. So what am I exercising? Oh, if you just... Mm, actually, when a person will just come and listen to the word, then they are, they are hearing and receiving the truth of the word of God, which is the gospel. And it's part of the beginning of hearing the truth that will produce faith in their lives. Which later on might lead to their justification. Yeah, and that justification that they are hearing, which is the gospel, becomes there when they accept it becomes justification by faith. In other words, when Amen. God, when God uh, declares us righteous, people doesn't know. And then when he, they hear the Bible study or television program or whatever, and they accept it, that justification, which is God's declaration that the world is right with God, it becomes personal, it becomes justification by faith. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank, got it, Pastor? Amen. Jim, thank you for that question. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm also encouraging anyone that if you have a question, thank you, Pastor Joan, for uh, sharing that question, you know, because some, some of our brothers and sisters here, yeah, they're in, I don't know if they're embarrassed, but most of the time, I'm telling them to, to just ask question because this is not a lecture this is just sharing you know and clarifying okay so maybe before we we pray we will read james chapter 2 verses 1 to 24 james chapter 2 verses 1 to 24 and then after that we will pray and then we will continue we will look at the we will continue our, our study after this Anybody wants to read James chapter 2, verses 21 to 24? Maybe, was that Sister Mimia or Sister Doris? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was made was faith made perfect? Mm -hmm. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Until what chapter? Twenty-four. Uh, 24, or maybe you continue to 26. You see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. Mm -hmm. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is also dead. Is dead also. Yeah, thank you, Sister Mimia. Did you see the... Did you see the demonstration of that faith in Abraham in verse 21? Was not Abraham our father justified by works? What works? When he had offered Isaac. In other words, it's more than 25 years before that faith <laughs> uh, reproduced the, the fruit of his work. But it happened in, uh, when God asked Abraham, Abraham, you will be the father of all nations abraham never understood that what to be a father of all nation because he knew that he's already old, old he's 75 years old and sarai was 65 years old so how can be how can he be a, the father of all nation but yet he believed and that that faith that abraham exercised talking with god was credited was imputed was declared uh, declared to him as righteousness and the fruit of that righteousness that was uh, credited to him was offering Isaac and that's more than 25 years even Rahab what's the fate of Rahab she heard how the God of Israel parted the Red Sea and allowed his people to cross over which is the baptism of the Israelites coming out from Egypt and going to the promised land but remember before they're going out of egypt and passing to the red sea that was their baptism 
through Moses. And before they're going to go to the promised land, God has to re-educate them for 40 years in the wilderness because they were in Egypt for 400 years, 430 years in Egypt. And nobody knows for how many generations about God. So God, before he will bring to the promised land, he has to re-educate once again to preach the gospel. How was the, the gospel preached to the Israelites? Through the sanctuary, the sanctuary message. And that sanctuary was God's master model plan of salvation. Preach to them. That's no wonder the gospel was preached even from Abraham to the Israelites. Actually, it started from Adam. Anyway, it's nine o'clock. So this time, please open your, your microphones and we will solicit a prayer request. It's good that Sister Dropati is here. And it's good that Sister Dropati is here and Pastor Jun Bao. And who else is here? Let me check. I cannot see. Hey. Sister Hi. Agnes, how are you? Good, how are you? Good to see you I'm here. Coming. Do I'm you have a request or you want to pray too? <laughs> just prayer request, okay. I guess. Okay, you have prayer request, right? Yeah, just um, the prayer for all the front lines and all who's suffering from COVID and all who's like sick right now mm -hmm. in general. Okay, very good. <clears throat> And we don't hear from Sister Maria and Brother Ray, but we will continue pray, to pray for their family, especially with Michele. Um, Sister Mar uh, Maria and Brother Ray, Monte de Ramos. Let's also pray for Toy and her family, Sister Victoria. I think she's not here with us today. Um, the misunderstanding of what is about the justification. Uh, for Darren just came, we are talking about, remember last night we we're talking about justification by faith, uh, the genuine faith, saving faith, and the role of faith. This time we are talking about the same thing, but uh, um, we added about just uh, sanctification, which is what God is doing to us through the Holy Spirit. So we'll just somehow clarify some issues about the misunderstanding about the two. Justification is what God has done for us. That's the holy yeah. history of Jesus Christ, the gospel. And I am, am I clear in there? Hold on. Okay, I have sound. I hope you can hear me there. Nice, yeah. Um, and sanctification. Remember, maybe we go back again to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. Maybe Darren can read or Sister Doris. It's all right. Whoever is ready. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. Welcome, Sarai. Sarai is here too. I think they are now members of New Jersey Philippine English Church. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. First Corinthians one thirty. Yes. But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, and mm. righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Okay. So in other words, we've been talking about that. What? What God has done for us in Jesus Christ was everything that was needed, necessary for our salvation. God accomplished it already in Jesus Christ. But when it comes to our uh, subjective experience, when we hear the gospel and we say yes to that, after hearing the gospel, we believe and we submit ourselves to that. We obey to the truth of the gospel that in Jesus Christ we live, we die, and we, we were resurrected together with him. That becomes our 
justification that justification that declaration legal declaration that we are right with god or righteous with god becomes ours becomes the believers experience by faith so he becomes justified justified by faith and then after that justification he will start to walk in the spirit walking by faith growing in grace that is called sanctification you see god made us god made jesus christ for us wisdom special knowledge of understanding salvation righteousness which is justification and sanctification that is our holy living or christian living or walking in the spirit we will see some um, common misunderstanding of this um, justification and uh, by faith so because this is uh, very important for us to know if we must understand it then our experience will will be always affected so justification by faith refers this is what they think being misunderstood uh, having a misunderstanding of this message of justification by faith to them it refers only to the forgiveness of past sins it is true that one of the important truths about justification or god making us right is the forgiveness of our past sins but justification involves far more than that far more than forgiveness of past sins it is the righteousness of christ includes the fact that he endured the just penalty of the law on our behalf that is our sin past present and future because christ only died once but in a positive sense christ also kept the whole law in our behalf of course we were together with him all this becomes ours the moment we receive it then we become justified by faith justification means all of christ's righteousness that he provided for us so that nothing is more required of us to qualify us for heaven in other words we stand perfect in him we are we stand perfect we stand complete in him so you can read it in um colossians chapter 1 verse 27 we present every man perfect in christ jesus so if we are not absolutely clear on this point we will continue to be a victim of self-concern this is the most dangerous experience a Christian will ever have. We will become victim of self-concern, constantly fearful about our eternal security. In this situation, in this condition, it is impossible to have a real heart appreciation of Christ's sacrifice on the cross or us to experience a genuine sanctification by faith. In other words, our Christian walk is always affected of how we understand this truth listen to this forgiveness is the most wonderful thing for us as sinners but glorious powerful and joyful as it is forgiveness is still negative thing for it is only concerned only with the acquitting us for our sins what happened to us when we are when we commit sin every day we commit sin so justification on the other hand is both negative and positive truth meaning it includes the negative the past sins only aspect forgiveness but it goes beyond the declaration or god declare us righteous and change our hearts from being self-centered to to being christ-centered maybe we will read philippians chapter 1 chapter 2 verse 21 <clears throat> we will read first uh philippians chapter 1 verse 21 and then we will go to first, philippians 2 21 i'll we start from chapter 2 verse 21 first Anybody's open for their Bible reading? Or I will read it. Uh, uh, Philippians Philippian 1.21. 
Yeah, 221 for, first. 221 first? Yeah. For all sake thereon, know the things which are of Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Before the gospel, before we encounter the gospel, everything that we do is for self benefit, for self gain. But now we are already in the Lord. We have been justified by faith and there's no more condemnation. What will be our, our aim, our, our mentality? Philippians 121. Philippians 121. Yeah. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Mm -hmm. So in other words, if we, are, if we accept this truth and we know this truth in the right way as the Bible is telling us, then everything that we have, whether we die or we live, we are in Jesus Christ. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. No defeat. No loss in the Christian walk. And praise the Lord for that. So the righteousness of Christ is put on our account, is credited to our account, so that we stand before God and His, His law perfectly righteous, both now and in the day of judgment. The reason for this that I want to share this, especially to us as a church, we serve the Lord, but it's most of the time there is insecurity. We don't know if we can make it. So we advise our people, our brothers and sisters, just hang on, just continue in the faith. And then every day we struggle because we don't have assurance of salvation. But, but by knowing the right um, message and understanding of righteousness by faith, we will have a Christ-centered um, faith and there's no self-concern if we can make it or not. If there's no place for one soul in, in heaven, the, the agape love of God was willing to die forever. Christ demonstrated it at the cross. He chose to die forever, not for three days because there's no such three days in the eternal God. Our sinful nature, our sins, ourselves, our Adamic life, our bias life died with Christ at the cross forever. So now at the resurrection, when we hear this message, this birth, life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, then the righteousness of Christ will be credited to our account and we stand perfect before, of course, that is by faith, in the sight of God and in His law. When? Both now, as soon as we accept the Lord and we walk by faith, we walk in the Spirit until judgment, we are already justified. So this is the super abundant gift of the gospel, gospel message. Maybe we can read three verses. Isaiah 54 verse 17. Isaiah 54, 17. Anybody wants to read? Sister Doris or Doreen? Or anybody? Other Jordan? Oh, Sister Doris and Sister uh, Doreen, you can read Acts chapter 13, verse 39. And Brother Jordan, Romans chapter 10, verse 4. Sister Doris, Isaiah 54, 17. The uh, read uh, Acts 13, 39, and Brother Jordan, Romans chapter 10, verse 4. This is powerful. This is Isaiah chapter 54, verse 7, 17. And it reads, No weapons formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and the righteousness is from me, says mm. the Lord. Can you imagine? Where do we get our righteousness that will stand in the judgment? The righteousness of God, the righteousness of Christ, right? No weapon will stand against us. In the day of judgment, we have boldness. We have courage to face the judgment, not because we are righteous but because our righteousness is the Lord. Amen? Okay, Amen. Darin, Acts chapter 13, verse 39. Brothers, understand what we are telling you. 
You can have forgiveness of your sins through this Jesus. The law of Moses could not free yeah. you from your sins, but you can be made right with God if you believe in Jesus. Hmm. What happened to us? We will what? We will be right with God if we believe in who? Of course, in Jesus, which is our righteousness. Praise the Lord for that. But at Jordan, Romans chapter 10, verse 4. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believe it. Okay. Um, I just want to make a note with this. A lot of Christians, they don't want the law of God, so they use this verse. They said, Christ is the end of the law. But when you read the whole passage, Christ is not the end of the law. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. In other words, all the, requi the righteous requirements of the law, Christ accomplished and he met all that requirements. And because he met it, all the requirements, by faith, he charged it to us. And all our sins, and together with us, was already judged at the cross. We were already executed at the cross. So by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, remember Romans chapter 4, verse 25, he was delivered up for our sins, and he was resurrected for our justification maybe we can read it um sister doris or brother jordan it doesn't matter whoever gets the the word first romans chapter 4 verse 45 basahin ko oh sige art thank you he was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification you see powerful so Jesus Christ is the end of the law for righteousness, meaning we do need to try to be righteous for God to accept us. And once we fall into sin, we will not become a, 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 unjustified. We will go to that in the number two. But this is uh, how it is. The devil, Satan, deceived many Christians into believing that justification by faith does not fully qualify us for heaven that something more is necessary, that they must keep the law and do good works. Now, as a result of this, many sincere believing Christians are trapped in a subtle form of legalism, living in fear and insecurity. So we call ourselves Christians, but we don't have that um, blessed assurance of salvation. We are trying to be good so that God will give us favor. So please, by the grace of God, we have to clear up the message of justification by faith. Number two, as I mentioned earlier, that people believe that another misunderstanding of justification by faith or righteousness by faith, that every time we sin or we fall into sin, we become unjustified. Please remember that Christ died only once. So this is another common misunderstanding about this message. It's a monstrous teaching that has no support from the Word of God. Let's go to the Word of God first in Hebrews chapter 10. Mark, if you want to say something, just come in, okay? Don't keep quiet. Mark? This Mark is very quiet this time. Okay, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10. And 12. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10. And 12. Or 14. Anybody? Art? Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10 and 14. Mr. Doris, or Darren, or Jordan? Uh, yes, okay. uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10. Uh, verse 10. And 14. Um, 10. By that we will have been uh, sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Mm -hmm. So you see? Uh, 
Only one sacrifice. We have been sanctified. So the sacrifice of Christ justifies us, declares us righteous, and gives us the power to, to live a life that is pleasing to God. So no more self-concern. This truth, justification by faith, everlasting gospel, always um, empower, uh, give us the light and understanding that we are declared righteous with God and it empowers us to live a life that is pleasing to God. No more self-concern. Verse 14, please. No, 12, 14, yeah. you said. Yeah, verse 14. 14. Yeah. For by one offering, he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. You see? So it's connected. We don't need to add. We don't need to improve. All what we can do is say, thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. So it yeah. is true that every time we fall into sin, we misrepresent Christ and hurt him but we don't glorify god but we don't become unjustified why because even the smallest sin figure in what had happened at the cross so however god does not reject us every time we make mistake or fall into sin if you have a child therein how old is uh uh Goryo? two three yeah Six. Six? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> anyway, so if they, they stumble and fall or do something wrong that you don't like, does Goryo become not your children anymore or not your child? Children. Not your child? Of no. course. He's still your child. You get hurt because he did something that is not that I you just... don't like. And they are growing in that. So meaning, every time we fall, we don't become and justified. So if we believe that we are lost or we, or we lost our justification every time we sin, it's time we sin, we completely invalidate the message or the truth of the gospel or justification by faith. Such concept is based on the idea that justified, that we are justified because of what we do. So it's still a subtle form of legalism. I hope we get this part, you know. So what Christ is doing in us and not because of what he has already accomplished with us. We want to add to that. So such idea makes the gospel good advice instead of good news. Okay. Now, now number three, you see it in the screen, right? It takes, some people think that it takes a lifetime or more to, t to reach the goal of sanctification, meaning they believe that we will be sanctified in the future. Not today. This is how many interpret the familiar expression, sanctification is the work of a lifetime. That's how they interpret that statement or expression. Sanctification is a work of a lifetime. Satan, Satan is happy. He is pleased to have us believe to believe this error. The apostle rebuked the, the Corinth in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 to 3. He was saying that you Christians, after 10 years, he preached the gospel. After 10 years, they did not grow in the spirit. They remained babes. You know how they remain babes? Some of them, they just follow Apollo. Some of them, they follow Paul. Some of them, they follow Peter, Jesus. They were divided in their leadership. So Paul was saying, what, ha what is happening to you? You are still babes in Christ. I cannot give you heavy meat. So the normal Christian life is Christ living in the heart by faith. And we are growing. Anything of, the, of this is falling short of God's ideal for each believer. Such a life, of course, is possible only when we continuously believe, watch, and pray. Because the sinful flesh... Is still alive, still kicking, very much alive, and is constantly trying to assert self. This is why sanctification is a work of a lifetime, not in the future, but it starts when you submit yourself to the Lord. It's like getting married. Before you get married, you're in love with each other already, and then you have the wedding day to legalize your relationship, and then after that, you're already 
husband and wife, that getting married is entering into a school that you will never graduate. So it's the same our relationship with the Lord. But with God, you know, we will not become unmarried anymore. We will not become unjustified. Okay? So it's the same as when we eat in our body, the work of a lifetime is we are to maintain our physical life. So what do we do? We eat every day. Not the whole day, but every day. Did you hear that? We don't eat the whole day. We only eat every day. Maybe three or two times a day. This time I only eat once a day because I don't have much exercise. <laughs> hmm. Okay. So if Christ is to continually live in us and through us, that is the work of sanctification and will be throughout our lifetime. Any question of that? The misunderstanding? That justification by faith only forgives us from the past sin? Uh, I'll give you a verse. Maybe when you go Bible study and tell you, oh yeah, that's only for past sins. And then they're going to use this verse. Let's go to Romans. Romans. Chapter 3, verses 24 and 25. Romans chapter 3, verses 24 and 25. Maybe Brad Jordan can read the, the verse. Brother Jordan, Romans chapter 3, verses 24 and 25. Or Sister Doris, whoever is ready. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. whom God had set forth to be a pro propitiation through faith in His blood, to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. Mm -hmm. So did you hear that? Maybe we can read it in Darren's version. Verse 24, of, uh, 25 of Romans 3. They are made right with God by His grace. This is a free gift. They are made right with God by being made free from sin to Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. God, saved, God gave Jesus as a way to forgive people's sins through their faith in Him. God can forgive them because the blood sacrifice of Jesus pays for their sins. God gave Jesus to show that he always does what is right and fair. He was right in the past when he was patient and did not punish people for their sins. And so did you hear, yeah, did you see the word past? Most of the time we apply that before we, beget, we, we become converted. Meaning when I was young and foolish. Now I'm converted, I'm already old and still foolish. That, that the word past there is not our past life. We can spiritualize that, but that's, what, that's not what the writer of Romans, that's what that Paul is saying about. He was saying that the past, in the past, God is in his forbearance, he forgives sins. That means in the people in the Old Testament. He forgave them by his forbearance, by his promise. And now it becomes reality through the blood of Jesus Christ. And he gave it freely by his grace. You understand? So that's what it means. So justified or the past sins. So we, so the justification did not only forgive us from our past sins, but the whole sin from Adam to the whole world. God declared this, the whole world, you are right with me now. Do you believe this? And when you say yes, that declaration that we have been justified becomes ours by faith. So now it's justification by faith. Okay. Now, in conclusion, what is... Righteousness by faith is all about. It is making real in our lives the righteousness of Christ by faith. In Christ, we are perfect and complete in every aspect. In Jesus Christ, none in ourselves. In character, in performance, in nature, and legally. Colossians chapter 2 verse 10. Anybody wants to read? Colossians chapter 2. 
verse 10. Colossians chapter 2 verse 10 maybe the Filipino maybe the Filipino people were not able to come from the Philippines because of the new <laughs> the new password or uh, the new ID number You want to read it there Colossians. Colossians chapter 2 verse 10 Hmm. What does it say, Sister Doris? Can you read it, please? Yes, it says, and you are completing him who is the head, the head of all principality and power. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we are complete in what? In everything. In Jesus Christ, yes. Yeah. Our completeness is not in ourselves, but in Jesus Christ. But because we Amen. say yes to that, we submit to the truth, we obey to the truth, now it's credited to us. So God is looking at us that we are perfect in character, in performance, in nature. But in ourselves, no. We always feel that we always lack. That's why our focus should be, our eyes, the eyes of faith should be to the author and the finisher of our faith, which is Jesus Christ. Right? Okay. So that is what God has obtained for us by the life and the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Let's check Hebrews chapter 9, verse 12. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 12. I will read it for your hearing. So Hebrews chapter 9, verse 12, it says that, neither by blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood. What did he do? He entered in once into the holy place, having obtained, what did he, what he, what was he accomplished? Accomplished? Obtained eternal redemption. For who? For us. Amen? I think this is a glorious message that we need to bring to the world. Don't tell the world, come to Christ so that he will accept you or forgive you. Tell the world that you are already accepted in the beloved. Christ already obtained salvation for us. Bring and spread the word. <laughs> Amen. That, that, that's what it means when the Bible says the loud cry or the trumpet sound is a clear and distinct message. Because today, a lot of Christians are preaching the gospel, but it's a conditional gospel or limited gospel. Conditional gospel means God did not save you. Uh, they, God did not completely save you. He only saved you partially and you have to do your part. So we make the good news into good advice. And then we realize that we cannot do our part. So the right understanding of the gospel, justification by faith, will produce in our hearts a, a, a faith that is not self-centered and insecure, but a heart, a faith that is a heart appreciation of what God has done for us. Okay? So, in actual experience, in and of ourselves, we often fall short of that perfection that we are talking about. So, Christian life of sanctification is the experience of becoming in character what we are already in Jesus Christ through justification by faith. So now this is the text. One of the seven, I gave it to you, but now I, will, I want you to take picture of this, if you can. Do you see in there, in the screen now? So this is the relationship of justification and sanctification. Justification is what is our status or our standing in Jesus Christ by faith. Sanctification is our experience is our, uh, is our experience that we have in Jesus Christ by faith. 
So justification is just a message of what we are and sanctification is a continuous experience as we walk by faith in the spirit. So justification, we were dead to sin. Romans chapter um, 6. Maybe we read Romans chapter 6 verse 11. Or Romans chapter 6 verse 4. Brother Jordan. Because it's too long to read Romans chapter six, chapter two, six verses two to ten. Just read verse four and verse eleven. Romans chapter six, verse four and eleven. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father. Even so, we also should walk in newness of life. Yes. Amen. How about Eleven. Heaven? Likewise, recon, ye also yourself to be dead indeed in, unto sin, but alive unto God, to Jesus Christ our Lord. Now look at the connection in justification and sanctification. In Romans 12, uh, 6, 2 to 12, especially verse 4, we are already dead. In Christ, we have been buried through baptism. Now in sanctification is the additional what Brother Jordan read in Romans chapter 6, verse 11. Consider yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to Jesus Christ. So we are dead to sin and give no place to sin. So those are the, the verses. Now, number two, we are alive to God already. We have a new life. We are born again. So that life that we live, we live to we live unto God. Uh, let's read Second Corinthians chapter five, verse fifteen. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse fifteen. Fourteen and fifteen. Doreen? For the love of Christ can strengthen us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead, and that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. You see? So now we are alive to God through justification, and in sanctification we live unto God. Amen? So number three, we are legally righteous. Romans chapter 1, verse 17. And then in sanctification, we have to live righteously. Maybe we can read uh, 1 Corinthians, uh, no, Romans chapter 1, verse, verse 17. Brother Jordan, Romans 1, 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, at is, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Mm -hmm. So the gospel reveals the righteousness of God that declares us righteous as sinners. So we are legally righteous in Jesus Christ. So in sanctification, we live righteously. Right? Let's read um, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 11. First Timothy, we have a lot of verses now. 6, 11. Mr. Doris? Oh, he's off. Art? But you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. But you, O oh man of God. Flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. Mm -hmm. You see? So that's what happened to us. We live righteously. Now, we ask in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 5. Maybe you just, we will just read it so we can have time more for more discussion. 
we'll summarize it and if you have some questions then we can discuss okay so in christ through justification we we are now legally children of god and in sanctification we act or we live as children of god is that okay with you brothers and sisters uh, we are now We are still in number five. So we are God's possession. And then, because we are already God's possession, we yield or surrender to God. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. We submit to God, we present to God our bodies, our lives, as a living sacrifice. Okay, number six. In justification, it says that we are not, we don't belong to this world anymore, but we are citizens of heaven. So the result of that, through the working of the Holy Spirit, we don't love the world anymore. But we are living like citizens of heaven. In other words, we are now ambassadors of Christ. We represent the kingdom of God. Number seven. We are crucified to the world, Galatians 6, 14. Just, just take picture or write it down. And then in, verse, in, in sanctification, we avoid worldly practices. Number eight, we, are, we became slaves of God, Romans chapter 6, verse 22. Before we were slaves of sin, but now we are slaves of God. So what do we do? We serve joyfully as God's servants. Amen? Okay, number Amen. nine. Um, we have a new life in Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.17 If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All old things pass away. Old, old they pass away. Behold, all things become new. Yeah. So at the incarnation, at the cross, Old things, everything that was have been damaged by sin was already crucified with Christ. It passed away. And all things, A-L-L, -L, become new. When? At the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Ellen White says, every bread, every loaf of bread, every blade of grass has been stamped of the cross. So because we have a new life in Jesus Christ, we're going to walk in the spirit in the newness of life. We have a new mind new new goals in life and our goal is to allow the holy spirit to fully reproduce that agape love of christ number 10 we were made obedience obedient to the law of god hi francis welcome hello po thank you uh, pastor not much mm -hmm. okay number six is we are not of this world. Oh, where are we now? Have new life. Ten. Okay, number, 10, number 10. We were made obedient to the law of God. Romans chapter 10. Christ is the end of the law. So our obedience to the law is not from ourselves, but the obedience of Christ credited to us. That's why our role as Christians, we don't obey the law. Please listen to this. We don't obey the law. We keep the law. Can we read uh, John 14, 15? John 14, 15. And the other one is Revelation 14, 12. Maybe Brother Jordan will be Revelation 14, 12. And Doreen will be, um, what did I say? John 14, 15. If you love me, you will do what I command. Oh my God, this is not uh, that version is do, but in the King James, is the word keep. Right? Of course, there is a doing in Christian living, but our doing is to keep what is already there. Got it? How about uh, Revelation 14.12, Brother Jordan? Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God 
and the faith of Jesus. You see, is keeping everything is keeping the commandments of God. And then, so we keep fulfilling the law. Or that's what it means. Uh, Revelation 4.12 is in... in, in uh, what is the difference between keeping and observing? Obeying. Obeying. Uh, obey is you obey the law. Uh, the strength of following the law comes from yourself. Right? Obey and live. So when you obey, let's go to Romans chapter, chapter 7. So Paul has an explanation for that. Thank you, Brother Jordan, for asking. Romans chapter 7. Let's start from verse 8 to 11. Romans chapter 7, verses 8 to 11. Oh, welcome to our brothers and sisters who are watching in Facebook. Are you there now, Brother Jordan? Yes. Verse eight, yeah, verse 8 to 11. But sin taking occasions by the commandment, wrath in me all manner of concupiscence. Mm -hmm. For without the law, sin was dead. Mm -hmm. For I was alive without the law once. But when the commandment came, sin revived and mm -hmm. I died. Wow. And the commandments which was ordained to life I found to be unto death. Mm, why? For sin taking occasion by the commandment deceived me and it slew me. Mm. Why? You know why? Remember Paul was a, a Pharisee. Oh, hold on. Hi, Ateros. Ateros? Hello. Yes, Ateros. Hi, good night. Oh, oh, okay, na man. Ah, okay lang, okay lang. Prayer. Yeah, nandito, Prayer. nandito naman si, si, sila, Sister Drew pati kanina. Hmm. Nandito pa kami ngayon. Mm -mm. Gusto mong makausap si Remy o ako? Ah, ikaw at ako siya. Ah, nangumusta lang. Okay naman. Nandito pa kasi kami sa Bible study. Oo, oh, nandito pa ako. Oo. Ay, ano sana? Nangumusta lang? Nangumusta lang ako. Ah, okay. Oh. Thank you, Ate Ros. Ah, si Kwan, nandito kanina si Agnes. Mm -mm. Yeah, yeah, I just spoke to her. Oh, oh, sige. Thank you, Ate Ros. Thank you for calling. God bless. Bye-bye. Sorry for the interruption. Sister Ros just uh, wants to say hello. And she was happy that Sister Agnes was here yesterday. So did you see the... Uh, the Paul was once... He was still a soul. Uh, he was a Pharisee. To him, obeying the law will save him. Because he, remember yesterday we, we showed the two ways of keeping the law. What are those? The, the letter of the law and the letter of the letter of the law and the spirit of the law. So before he doesn't know the gospel, he was obeying the law by his own effort, believing that it will save him. But when he encountered the spirit of the law, the truth of the law, he found himself that he, has, he was guilty and he has to be put to death. So that's, that is obeying the law. When you obey the law, you have to obey continuously. You don't obey the law now and then you don't obey and then you will obey again. The law will put you to death. So it was Christ who came and met the requirements of the law by his perfect life. And then when he met the requirements of the law by his perfect life, that is part of the gospel, his perfect life. When we accept the gospel, his perfect life is now credited to us. That's how God is looking at us now. We are perfect in character, in nature, in performance, only by faith in Jesus Christ, not in ourselves. Did you get it? 
So when we accept this, we keep the law of God, the Christ. Which you see in uh, Revelation 14:12, the two characteristics of the of the saints, they keep the commandments of God and keep. It's not there in King James, but two things they keep: they keep the commandments of God and they keep the faith of Jesus Christ. Is that clear, Brother Jordan? The keeping and obeying. Yeah. Okay. So, always the saints keep the commandments, keep the faith of Jesus Christ. Okay. Next, we have two more: eleven to fifteen, and then sixteen to twenty. Uh, is, all these verses are the same. You can take picture with this, and then you can discuss if you want. So now. Because of justification, we become now carriers. We become now channels of light. You are the light of the world. In Matthew 5.14. But because we are now uh, children, uh, light of the world, we walk as the children of light. Matthew 5.16. Let your light. So that light that we have, is in singular that is jesus christ and him crucified that's the gospel that's our light the you is in plural a lot of people many christians we are many as believers but we have one light so let your a lot of people the believers light singular shine where before men what is that light that they may see your good works and what will happen god will save us or people around us will glorify the Father. Glorify the Father. So we don't do good works for God to save us because we are already saved in Jesus Christ. We do good works so that people may see Christ in us, the hope of glory. All right? Any question, Darren? With that point? Sister Doris? Or anybody there? Is that clear? Okay. So we are cleansed, John 15, 3, by the word we are cleansed. What word? Jesus Christ by his holy life and his sacrificial death. So what do we do? We participate through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit that we cleanse ourselves. Okay, maybe we can read uh, Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. It says here, Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Doreen, you have it? Can you read it, please? Brothers and sisters, continue to think about what is good and worthy of praise. Mm -hmm. Think about what is true and honorable and right and pure and beautiful and respected. Mm -hmm. That's it? Mm -hmm. Oh. Very good. Because in King James, it says, so, so everything is so lovely. So everything, sir. It's uh, more words, but it's the same. So the pure. When when there is coronavirus or ano yung tawag ng bumagsak yung yung pera nila sa sa market. So devalue. Ha? Huh? Devaluation. Devalue. Devaluation. Pero may tawag sila nyan eh. Bankrupt. Depression. Recession. Depression. Repression. Depression. Yeah. When there is depression, how do people react? They become depressed. <laughs> when there is coronavirus, what, the, what is our focus? To save ourselves, right? But the Bible, as Christians, actually this is what we are doing by the grace of God. This is not for our own, own effort. This is the inspiration of the love of God through the Holy Spirit. We are focusing on my, our minds to the what is good. Everything that is good is not from the world, but from the word of God. You see? So, did you hear some testimonies earlier that they don't mind it anymore because our focus is we're busy with the Word of God. When you entertain those coronavirus and, and how many people died every day in the st statistics, you get affected and you get depressed. So, what is this that cleansing yourself? Focusing our minds to the Word of God. Submitting ourselves to the Spirit of the Lord. And there's no fear that will come. It, the faith will take over fear. This is fear, will dissipate, and faith will come and being manifested. 
So 13, God made us holy, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1, even before the, before the foundation of the world. So what do we do? We live a holy life. Not by trying and screwing our effort, but because allowing the Spirit to live in us. Amen. Let's, let's read the First Peter chapter um, 1, verses 15 and 16. First Peter chapter 1, verses 15 and 16. Maybe we can ask Darren to, to read it for us. Be holy in everything you do, just as God is holy. He is the one who chose you. In the scriptures, God says, be holy because I am holy. Mm -hmm. So our holiness is not sinlessness. Our holiness is believing to the holy life of Jesus Christ. Amen. So all those verses there, you can check. And then 15. We made, we made secure in Jesus Christ. Actually, that secure there is actually assured. We are assured in Jesus Christ. Since Darren is in First Peter, maybe you go to verse 5. Because you are in verses 15 and 16. First Peter 1 Peter 1.5. God's power protects you through your faith and it keeps you safe until your salvation comes. That salvation is ready to be given to you at the end of time. Can you imagine? So it's a continuous, right? So powerful until the end of time. So that is sealed. That is secure. Now what do we do? In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 10, what do we do? The prophets studied carefully and tried to learn about this salvation. They spoke about the grace that was coming to you. Mm. So, we enjoy about that grace that came to us. Amen. Okay, the last five. The Spirit dwells and leads us. And then, through sanctification, we yield to the control of the Holy Spirit. We allow the Spirit of God to control us. Number 17. When we become born again, we accept that gospel being justified by faith through the righteousness of Christ. We become born again, but when we become born again, we study already that therein, but we're going to present it here too, spiritual gifts. The Holy Spirit brings also that spiritual gift to us for the edifying of the saints and to witness to the world the power of the gospel. We, God will not give us the spiritual gift so that it will help it will help to save us. No. God gave us that spiritual gift. I think we will read it again. Ephesians chapter 4, verses uh, maybe 12 and 13. Ephesians chapter 4. Mr. Doris, can you read? Are you there? I'm here. 4, yeah. uh -huh. Four verses 12 to 13. Uh, let's, let's start from verse 11. 11 to 13. Uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 4, 11. Uh, he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Mm. So what is the purpose of the spiritual gift? Edifying the body of Christ and to bring forth in the full stature of Christ. Got it? So that is the spiritual gift. So what do we do? If, we, if the Holy Spirit gives us a spiritual gift, what do we do? We use that gift to bring it to the world. Let's see. Romans chapter 12, verses 3 to 8. That's... Uh, Romans chapter 12, verses 3 to 8. Brother Jordan. Chapter 4. Chapter 12. Chapter 12, verse 4. Verses, yeah, verses 3 to 8. 
For I see through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he thought to think, mm -hmm. but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Mm -hmm. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. Mm. So we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. Mm -hmm. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Mm -hmm. Or ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth or teaching, or he that extorteth on exhortation, he that giveth. Let him do it with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence, he that sheweth mercy with cheerfulness. So what do we do with our spiritual gift? Use it, right? Yeah, according to the gifts that has been given. All right. And that is in justification, right? In 17. Yeah. So number, number 18, we are empowered by the Holy Spirit to witness. And, and sanctification, we witness to that power. In other words, we... Like Brother Epi, those people who know me when I was small, my cousins, they cannot believe that I go different places to share the gospel because they know me that I am an introvert. I don't want to face people. I am, I am ashamed. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. When I was small, if there is a party in the house or whatever, I, just, I don't join the party. I just sit down somewhere in the corner and cry. So that's me. So it takes the gospel to to empower us so it empowered for we are empowered for witnessing now we wit we witness to the people that power so when i go to the philippines and preach it's not because i go there for whatever reason but to share that power that god has given me to bring the the power of god unto salvation which is the gospel so in 19 we are given of christ's love romans chapter 5 verse 5 maybe we'll read it so those who are praying for the holy spirit those who are praying to that God will, will give us that love, this is the verse for us. And let us look at the verses. We will ask Sister Darren to read it in Romans chapter 5, verse 5. And this hope will never disappoint us. We know this because God has poured out his love to fill our hearts through the Holy Spirit he gave us. Hmm. What happened? He gave that love in where? In our hearts, who gave that heart, that love to in our hearts, the Holy Spirit that was what given to us. What is the verb tense? Past, present, future. Huh? It's past, right? Mm -hmm. Given to us, and now we are insulting God by asking, Lord, please give us the Holy Spirit. Lord, help us to love one another. He gave it already. Look at. 13 verses 34 and 35 how do we love how do we express this love can we love one another so that god will give us favor john chapter 13 34 and 35 we love one another maybe we will read it again sister darren what's the verse uh, john chapter 13 34 to 35 I give you a new command. Love each other. You must love each other just as I love you. All people will know that you are my followers if you love each other. Mm -hmm. And then 35? You read it already? Yeah. So how do we love one another? As I have loved you. So for us to love one another, it's not because we love each other like Brother Jordan and I. We don't love each other, but we love each other. Right, Brother Jordan? How do we love each other? As Christ loved us. 
You see? Mm -hmm. The last one. Nobody can accuse us that we are an illegal children of God. We are children of God in Jesus Christ. We are legally in Christ and nobody can take that out from his hand. How, how, how do we know that nobody, nobody can take, a, take that truth in the hands of the Lord? Look at this. Very beautiful. Let's go to Isaiah. The book of Isaiah, chapter, chapter 49, verses 15 and 16. I want Darren, Sister Doris, and Brother Jordan to read it for us, or even Brother Arthur, if, if it's okay. With different, uh, Brother Art, can you read it in your version? So Brother Jordan in King James, Sister Doris in her own version, Darren in her own version, the new version that you have and brother Arthur what verse um, Isaiah chapter 49 verses 15 and 16 I'll read first okay can a woman forget her uh, sucking child that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb what is the answer yeah yeah. That thee me ye forget, yet mm -hmm. will I not forget thee. Mm -hmm. Behold, the I have driven thee upon the palms of my hands. The palms. At the palms of my hands. Mm -hmm. Thy walls are continually before me. Before me. So God engraved already our life in the palm of his hand. Where did it happen? At the cross. So nobody, nobody can take us away from, from Christ. Amen? That's good news. Coronavirus will never take us from Christ. Praise the Lord for that. Sister, uh, Darren, your, uh, Sister Doris, your version. Uh, yes, it says, Can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of a womb? Mm -hmm. Surely they may forget. Yes, I will not forget you. Amen. Why? 16. See, I have inscribed you on the palm of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. Wow. Beautiful. Doreen? I think you are unmuted. Yes. But the Lord says, can a woman forget her baby? Can she forget the child who came from her body? Even if she can forget her children, I cannot forget you. Mm. I drew a picture of you on my hand. You are always before my eyes. Wow. Art? Verse 15. 14 and 15. Uh, 14 and 15. Yeah. But Zion said, the Lord has abandoned me. My Lord has forgotten me. Mm. Can a woman forget her nursing child? Will she have no compassion on the child from her womb? Although mothers may forget, I will not forget you. Amen. Why? 16. 16. I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are always in my presence. Praise the Lord. So you see, if, if Jesus Christ has Facebook, we are all in his Facebook. If Jesus Christ has wallet, all our pictures will be in, in his wallet. If Jesus Christ will have a tattoo, all our names and faces will be in his body. That's what Jesus is telling us. So because it's already graven in, in his hands, nobody can take that away. So we are a legal children of God now. So what do we do? In sanctification, in our Christian walk, we joyfully abide in Jesus Christ. Amen? So in conclusion, brothers and sisters, the life God expects from us is the life of his son. Every provision has already been made for us in Jesus Christ. Faith plus works never justifies us. But true justification by faith always produces 
good works. Is that clear to us? So we don't believe in God and then we will add our effort. That's not right. It is by believing in what God has done for us that will produce energy for us to work for his glory, not for salvation anymore. Anyone? So in 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, it says, For every born of God overcomes self, overcome the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Amen? Okay, any comments there or question? Brother Francis, Brother Mark, magsalita ka naman. Namimiss na namin yung boses mo eh. Is there Doris, any question or comment? Doreen? Um, uh, I was looking at, um, what was that? Point seven. Uh -huh. Avoid wor worldly practices. Yes. Can you give us some example? Avoid worldly practices. Uh -huh, first uh, John 2, 5. Hold on, I, I, I will give you. Okay, please. Yeah, I will give you an example. My actual experience. Oh. <laughs> I, will give you, I will give you the verse first. <laughs> Why? Yes. Mm. First John 2, 15. Okay. Second Timothy, chapter 2, verse 22. God bless you, 22, second thing I'll take. Hold on, let's go in there. Got it? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, second Timothy 22. Yes. Um, 222. Mm -hmm. Flee also your full lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Mm -hmm. So that's avoiding worldly practices, right? When yes. I was uh, early 80s, I don't know if you know the band Air Supply. I like that, that group. But they had a concert in the Philippines in Araneta Coliseum. And my good sisters and my cousins bought me a ticket because they know that I like that band. But I said I, don't, I, I, I prayed about it. And when I was praying that morning, they give me they have already the ticket because they want to go and of course they included me in that ticket when i pray in that morning this is the verse that the lord gave me flee also youthful lust i said what is this and oh, then at wow. the end of the concert my cousin said we should better to to listen to just listen from the we still use the tape cassette tape before there's no cd before just a cassette right. tape so we were listening from the cassette tape, it's better to listen music of air supply in the cassette tape than going to the concert because a lot of people uh, having those uh, Mary Jane, cocaine and all those drugs, they were enjoying the music with drugs. So they did not enjoy the, the concert. So the Lord saved me from that by, by listening to this. I told my sister, you know what, I, will, I, I know I appreciate that you give, um, bought that ticket for me, but I will not go because the Bible says, said, you only study the Bible and talk about the Bible on Saturday, but not, not every day. That is cancer. This is different. That's when we were talking about. But when they went to that concert, they come home and say, oh, Praim. They call me Praim. That's my name, my household name, Praim, Ephraim. It's good that you did not come. We did not enjoy the concert. So I don't know this message yet, but the, the verse that the Lord enlightened me already, I did not go to that. So it says, flee from your youthful lust. How about First Peter chapter 3, verse 11? 
But, but this, does this also apply like to Christian concerts, like the ones that they show nowadays? With well, a lot depends. of like, like rock and rolls and uh, sounds and stuff like that? It depends because today we don't focus much of the message of the gospel. We focus much on our emotion. Right. So most of the Christian concerts nowadays is more yeah. on emotion and more on entertainment. It will not mm -hmm. lift your spirit anymore and you can see Jesus. For example, right. this, um, this praise and worship song, the mm -hmm. lyrics are beautiful, but they're singing it over and over again until you become um, emotional and you don't think, you, your reasoning is not working anymore. It's just an emotion. You pray the Lord, oh yes, Lord. And it's not the, the frontal lobe that is working anymore. It's the emotion, yes, Lord. And then you are listening to the prayer with very fast. Oh, yes, Lord, we thank you and praise you for your goodness. We, we are here. You brought something like that and you become emotional. There's no more reasoning. Okay. So it's up to us. We pray and ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, I'm planning to go to this concert and let the Spirit talk to you. Like, at least in my experience, I always <laughs> believe the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Good verse. Very good answer. Mm -hmm. How about the uh, first Peter chapter two verse eleven? You want first more? Peter. First Peter chapter two verse eleven. Mm -hmm. Take us more. Oh, it did. Oh, yeah. Chapter 2, verse 11. Yeah. It says, Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. Mm -hmm. Can you read it there in your version? Dear friends, you are like visitors and strangers in this world. So I beg you to keep your lives free from the evil things you want to do, those mm -hmm. desires that fight against your true selves. You see? So that's what it means, avoid worldly practices. Did you get it, Sister Doris? Yes, yes. Thank you so much for clarifying. Yeah. Any more questions or additional comments? Can you show 11 to 15 again? I forgot to take a oh, picture. Hold on. Um, before we do, uh, before we will uh, uh, answer that question, I just want to say to our Facebook uh, listener and followers, thank you for joining us. God bless you all.